and welcome to Science View, where we cover the latest advances in Japanese science and technology. I'm your navigator, Tomoko Kimura, and this week's science watcher is Dr. Eiji Mizushima from the University of Tsukuba. Hello, I'm glad to be here with you today. Here is today's lineup. On today's Leading Edge, we'll look at BioCoke, an advanced biomass fuel. This new biomass fuel that has been created in Japan has a low impact on the environment and can be used in a variety of applications since it is durable and can burn for a long period of time compared to conventional fuel. BioCoke is already being used in test applications and is headed for commercial development. We'll examine this more in detail. And on J Innovators, Michelle? Our Takumi on today's episode developed a machine that can instantly separate various types of plastics that have been crushed for recycling. The Takumi developed a machine that can separate plastics with a mechanical eye. We will look at the secret to how it doesn't even miss plastic pieces only 5 millimeters in size. But first, let's begin with today's Science News Watch, where we introduce one of the latest topics in the world of science and technology, Dr. Mizushima. A test plant has been constructed for the cultivation of algae, which is generating interest as a source of biofuel to make oil from carbon dioxide using photosynthesis. The plant has already started full-scale operations. This 80-meter outdoor pool cultivates algae, which produces oil from carbon dioxide through photosynthesis. This test plant was constructed by a major automobile parts manufacturer in Kumamoto Prefecture's Amakusa City on the grounds of a junior high school that has been closed. The advantage of biofuel made from algae is that the emission of carbon dioxide is low compared to other materials, since the biofuel is made through photosynthesis of plant material. This is the current focus of interest in biofuel, and manufacturers are aiming to establish technology that will enable the large-scale culture of algae by fiscal year 2018, and proceeding with research into applications of biofuel made from algae. If this kind of sunlight continues, I expect we'll have a significant yield. I'm giving this my full effort so we can do business as soon as possible. Biofuels are expected to help reduce greenhouse gases, and there have been proposals to make them from a variety of raw materials. But making this practical is still a challenge from the perspective of mass production and cost. Nevertheless, Japan envisions having airplanes powered by biofuels ready for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. And biofuels using this algae are attracting attention as a promising candidate for that goal. And now for the leading edge. Today's topic is about advanced biomass fuels. Dr. Mizushima, we just introduced how algae makes oil, and we also hear a lot about bioethanol and biogas. Research in this area really seems to be progressing. I certainly agree. There are great expectations for these materials as replacements for petroleum and natural gas. However, the real star of today's program is this. What is this? This is what we call bio-coke, and it may become a substitute for coal. It really does look like coal with its black color, but I didn't think that coal was used as much in this modern age. Have a look at this. This pie chart illustrates the ratio of all of Japan's energy sources. According to this, 23% of the country's energy source is coal. If we think of that amount per person, that's an incredible one ton used per person each year. That's a large amount. So where is all that coal being used? Let's take a look. Iron and steel related industries use the most coal to make steel and other metalworks. This metal is created at steel plants by heating iron ore inside a large furnace. Coal coke is used to heat the furnace until it reaches a temperature hot enough to melt iron. The coal is baked to remove impurities such as sulfur. 
Coal is an essential fuel for the steel industry. Even at this factory that makes machine parts, coal coke is used in the process of improving the iron quality. Here they are creating high strength iron to which carbon has been added. By using coal coke that includes additional carbon when they melt the raw materials, they can produce iron that is much stronger than regular iron. They have been conducting tests at this factory by switching 10% of the coal coke with bio coke. If they can use bio coke, they can lower the impact on the environment by decreasing the amount of fossil fuels used. However, they cannot permit a decrease in product quality. The temperature of the furnace is key here. That temperature is 1500 degrees Celsius. If they mix in bio coke, will the temperature in the test rise to that amount? They will also check to see whether there is any problem in the iron quality. When the temperature of the heated furnace is measured after bio coke has been mixed in, 1574 degrees, they have cleared the goal. There is no effect on the quality and they have created iron that can be used in their products. The iron created showed values in line with our composition goal, so I think the material is fine. We'll probably be able to substitute about 30% of the coal coke with bio coke, so we're very excited about this. So coal is used to make iron, and they've started to partially replace it with bio coke. Yes, iron ore, which is a raw material for iron, contains iron that has binded to oxygen. So to remove that oxygen, workers have to cause a reaction with carbon at a high temperature. Since 90% of coal coke is carbon, it puts out a tremendous amount of heat energy. That is why it can achieve a very high temperature, which enables use in the production of steel. I understand how important coal is, and I'm glad we can also use bio coke. It's a significant achievement. For example, Using normal wood material produces a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. And the temperature doesn't rise since they just burn away. So being able to achieve 1,500 degrees Celsius with biomass fuels is rather amazing. I see. The advantage of bio coke is that it has less impact on the environment compared to coal. Since the carbon dioxide given off when bio coke is burned is the same amount of carbon dioxide that the raw plant materials absorb during their growth process, it doesn't increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. By the way, here are some more samples of bio coke made from various materials. Take a look at them. You can make bio coke from various materials? So what was this one made from? You will probably recognize it when you smell it. Smell it? It smells a little like green tea. They still retain the smell of the raw material. Try this one. It's made from pencils. Pencils? It does smell like pencils, and it's very colorful. Most things can become bio coke as long as they are plant-derived material. Really? But I wonder why someone even thought of making biofuel from things like this. Well, actually, that someone didn't set out to make bio coke. It was born out of a coincidence. This is the developer of bio coke, Dr. Tamio Ida of Kindai University. Ida was engaged in research on biomass fuels in the year 2000. He was first interested in wood pellets that use plant material just as it was in a solid state. Wood pellets are made from tree thinnings and other such material that have been pressed and then compression molded. 
These are already being used as fuel in pellet stoves and boilers. Ida wondered if he might be able to change them into better performing wood pellets by adding heat instead of just pressure. So Ida conducted experiments in which he raised the temperature to over 300 degrees. Then one day... Unusual smoke started coming out of the reaction cylinder. I was interested in trying to find out how I could suppress the smoke. So I lowered the temperature. He repeated his experiments over and over and eventually lowered the temperature to 180 degrees. This led to the creation of a strange mass and only the top half had changed to a blackish color. Furthermore, in that black portion, there was a subtle glossiness. It turned into a hard mass, giving off a blackish color that was different from before. And that was when I really felt there might be something valuable here. Just what exactly happened during this time? Plants are mainly composed of three types of polymers made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These are cellulose, which is very fibrous, lignin, which binds the cellulose, and hemicellulose, which functions as an adhesive to secure the cellulose and lignin. First, only the hemicellulose begins to melt as the temperature starts to rise. Then, adding pressure causes the lignin to react. Hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms are emitted in the form of H2O, or water. After that, the mass is cooled, but pressure continues to be applied. Doing this changes the structure of the lignin itself. The carbon atoms that were not connected now form a strong connection. This is active lignin. It's now in a state of high energy density. By hardening the melted hemicellulose, the active lignin remains fixed in its compressed form. The upper half is the only part that has become black because the reaction slowly progressed from the top down. The sample was removed before the reaction could finish. Ida continued his research after that and discovered the optimum conditions to cause the reaction. We had Ida try using actual tea leaves. First, the dried tea leaves are pulverized very finely in a mill and then put into the cylinder. This is now 180 degrees Celsius, and the initial moisture value is at about 10%. The added weight is 4 tons, and pressure is 20 megapascals. The sample is heated under these conditions for 15 minutes. After that, it is cooled down completely. Just from this process, the tea leaves were transformed into a material with a luster almost like plastic. This is bile coke. And in this way, a biomass fuel that can produce a high amount of energy has been born. It's incredible that he's able to create, in just 15 minutes, a fuel similar to coal, which takes millions of years to form naturally. Yes. And it's interesting that green tea can turn into biocoke, but wouldn't that be a waste? That was just an example. But there's actually a lot of tea leaves and other plant-derived materials that usually go to waste. I see. I was also wondering that if just making biocoke requires a large amount of energy, that might be rather meaningless. That's a very good point. But actually, that is not an issue. It can be made with less than 3% of the energy that biomass has. 3% seems like a good figure. So earlier we mentioned the iron and steel industry, but are there other places where coal is being used? This graph shows how much coal is used in fish type of industry. 
So after iron and steel, power generation uses quite a lot of coal as well. That's right. In fact, coal is used in thermal power generation. If that's the case, biocoke could be used in thermal power generation, right? Yes, but using biocoke in its current form is difficult. In order to make this possible, they still need to raise the heating value and improve the quality of biocoke. Let's see how it is done. Is there some sort of obstacle preventing biocoke from being used in thermal power generation? The combustion temperature of the coal used in thermal power generation is 1800 degrees Celsius at the most. Coal has to be changed into fine carbon powder that is easy to burn. Its composition includes 80% carbon. Looking at the ratio of elements included in the biocoke, carbon makes up approximately 50%. However, biocoke also includes 30% oxygen. First, Ida aimed to approach the composition of coal powder by removing oxygen from this point on. It was at that point that Ida took the finished biocoke and put it back into the equipment. He thought that he could remove even more oxygen by heating the biocoke again while applying pressure. The temperature is 330 degrees. This is a much higher temperature than when first making biocoke. A little while after Ida began heating the sample, steam vapor has begun to emerge little by little from the reaction container. This is water that was formed chemically from the moisture remaining in the biocoke. This is the residual of oxygen atoms and carbon atoms. The sample is now finished after about one hour. It has approximately half of the volume compared to biocoke. The color is darker as well, and it has changed into a material that crumbles easily. The percentage of carbon has been raised to 77%. However, the oxygen has been reduced to less than half. The purity of the carbon has increased, and this is now semi-carbonized biocoke. It is easy to make it into a powder like coal powder, and it could even be used in thermal power generation. Japan is currently generating electricity with an extremely fine powder form of coal that is only 70 microns. But one advantage of semi-carbonized biocoke is that they could use it just as it is. I see. It seems like there is great potential for biocoke. So what will be required to increase the spread of biocoke in the future? Well, current challenges include having a cheap way of collecting plant-derived materials. It will be important to provide biocoke as cheaply as possible if this fuel is to support our energy platform.